In late 2024, Norway and Germany signed a joint development contract for one of Europe's most ambitious missile projects, the 3SM, Tyrfing. Developed by Kongsberg Defense and Aerospace, together with Germany's Deal Defense and MBDA Deutschland, Tierfing marks a decisive step for the Nordic region, from a defensive posture toward a credible long-range strike capability. It represents a generational leap beyond the naval strike missile that Kongsberg has already supplied to numerous NATO allies. Designed to fly at speeds between Mach 2 and Mach 3, with a range approaching 1,000 kilometers, Tierfing will give Northern Europe its first supersonic sea-skimming missile, able to threaten high-value targets far beyond the coastlines of the Baltic and the Arctic. The program officially entered its concept and design phase in 2024. Supported by a Norwegian investment of roughly 1.5 billion NOK and a German budget allocation of about 650 million euros. The missile's first full-scale prototypes are expected by the early 2030s, with operational deployment envisioned around 2035. In the broader strategic context, the Turfing project coincides with a wider Scandinavian rearmament. Finland and Sweden joining NATO, Norway expanding its missile defense systems, and the region as a whole integrating its forces under the Nordic Defense Cooperation Framework. For both Oslo and Berlin, developing an indigenous supersonic strike missile is as much about technological sovereignty as it is about deterrence. At the heart of Tierfing's design lies a ramjet propulsion system derived from the Thor ER engine program. A ramjet engine compresses incoming air at high speed without the need for moving compressor blades, allowing efficient propulsion at sustained supersonic velocities. While slower than hypersonic glide vehicles, a Mach 3 sea skimming missile remains extremely difficult to intercept. Flying mere meters above the surface, it compresses the defender's reaction time to seconds. The challenge for engineers is balancing speed, range, and guidance precision while managing the extreme heat loads that occur at such velocities. The seeker head must survive temperatures exceeding several hundred degrees Celsius while maintaining target lock through sea clutter, jamming, and countermeasures. Turfing is conceived as a dual role system, both an anti-ship weapon and a land attack cruise missile. That flexibility is critical for small navies like Norway's or Germany's, which must extract maximum versatility from limited platforms. It will likely use a two-stage booster to reach cruise altitude before the ramjet takes over, guided by inertial and satellite navigation, and refined through an active radar or imaging infrared seeker in the terminal phase. A secure data link should enable mid-course updates from ships, aircraft, or satellites, allowing the missile to engage moving or time-sensitive targets. This networked approach reflects NATO's new concept of distributed fires, where sensors and shooters across the Alliance share targeting data in real time. The leap from subsonic NSM to supersonic 3SM is not merely quantitative. NSM's strength lies in its stealthy shape, intelligent flight path, and precision. Turfing will trade stealth for speed, relying on kinetic energy and reduced engagement windows to survive. If it performs as expected, it could become Europe's counterpart to weapons such as India's Brahmos or Russia's Onyx, though at lower cost and with NATO standard integration. In an era when Russia deploys hypersonic Kinjal and Zircon missiles, the introduction of a Western supersonic system in Northern Europe restores a degree of parity. Operationally, 
Tierfing would enable Scandinavian and German frigates to hold at risk targets deep within the Barents or Baltic Seas. A missile launched from the Norwegian coast could reach ships operating near Murmansk. A German vessel in the North Sea could threaten installations on the Kola Peninsula. The psychological effect of such reach should not be underestimated. Even if never used, the mere existence of turfing alters the adversary's calculus, forcing the Russian Navy to disperse assets and invest in new layers of air and missile defense. For NATO commanders, it expands the Alliance's conventional deterrence without crossing into nuclear thresholds. However, such ambition comes with serious challenges. Supersonic propulsion systems demand precision materials and manufacturing tolerances that few European firms have mastered. Heat-resistant alloys, composite airframes, and compact electronic components must be developed largely from scratch. The program also faces the typical risk of multinational projects, diverging industrial priorities, political changes, and cost overruns. Integrating the missile into existing ships, such as Germany's F-124 frigates or Norway's Fritjof Nansen class, requires modifications to launch cells and combat management systems. Unless NATO agrees on a standardized vertical launch interface, each Navy may end up with customized versions, complicating logistics and interoperability. Financial sustainability is another uncertainty. The German Bundestag has approved initial research funding, but later phases will depend on defense budgets in the 2030s. With competing priorities such as air defense, drones, and hypersonic interceptors, Turfing will have to prove both technological maturity and strategic necessity to survive political scrutiny. There is also the question of export control. Will Berlin allow Kongsberg to sell the missile to other NATO members, as it did with the NSM? Wider adoption could lower unit costs but raises sensitivities about proliferation of long-range strike systems. Strategically, the missile's appearance will amplify an emerging shift in Nordic defense thinking. For decades, Scandinavia emphasized total defense and territorial protection. The new era demands deterrence through reach. By fielding a supersonic strike weapon, Norway signals that it can not only defend its coastline, but also threaten hostile assets before they approach. Germany, for its part, gains an indigenous capability that reduces dependence on U.S. cruise missiles and strengthens Europe's technological base. The program thus carries industrial and symbolic weight, Europe taking responsibility for its own advanced munitions rather than importing them. Yet technology does not exist in a vacuum. As Tierfing progresses, adversaries will adapt Russia has already expanded deployment of S-400 and S-500 interceptors around the Kola region, and electronic warfare units are training specifically to jam maritime data links. Laser and microwave defenses, still experimental, could eventually offer cheaper countermeasures against supersonic threats. The offense-defense cycle continues ensuring that no system remains dominant for long. For the developers, success will depend on keeping the design modular enough to accept later upgrades in sensors, engines, and electronic protection. If all goes to plan, the first live flight tests of Tierfing could occur before the end of this decade. Demonstrating stable supersonic crews over sea level would validate Europe's most advanced missile program in decades. But even before entering service, the project already fulfills a strategic function. It binds Germany and Norway into a long-term defense partnership 
accelerates research into ramjet propulsion, and inspires a new generation of Nordic engineers to think beyond defensive doctrine. Whether Tierfing ultimately flies at Mach 2 or Mach 3 matters less than the message it sends, that the North is no longer content to rely solely on imported deterrence. For Northern Europe, Tierfing symbolizes a new phase in defense evolution, agile, technologically ambitious, and geopolitically assertive. If it succeeds, the missile will redefine naval warfare across the Baltic and Arctic, compressing distances that once served as buffers and transforming the Nordic region into one of NATO's most advanced strike zones. Should it stumble under cost or complexity, the lessons learned will still feed the next generation of European weapons, perhaps paving the way toward a true hypersonic future. In either case, the race has begun, and the sound barrier is no longer the limit of Scandinavian strategy.